defeated Andre the Giant. Yeah, well, we had what well, was a tag match. We beat Dusty Rhodes, but it was a tag match, so we beat Dusty and Andre. Of course, I always go. I beat Dust. I beat Andre the Giant. Of course. <laughs> okay. If Andre was here right now, you go. What'd you say, boy? <laughs> but uh, we beat Dusty. But even doing that in Superdome was something amazing back then. You know, it made me was well, Super Destroyer. You know, uh, golly, Scott. I love Scott. He was a great guy. I hate to see him pass away. God bless him. You know. Yeah. Um, but he, uh, yeah, we had. He was a good partner. You know. But. Um, yeah, me and Scott Irwin did that, and uh, it put our name on the map there when we did that, you know. A lot of people knew us then, you know, all over the world, you know. How'd that feel? Because you were still somewhat young. I mean, it's still early 80s. Yeah, you know? I had a guy come up to me. He, he said, says, at the last show I just did, he goes, hey, the grappler, I can't believe it. This guy here was in the main event of Superdome when he was 19. I went, no, I was 21. <laughs> but no, it felt great. It really did. I mean, like, I, looking back now, I go, I say 21, unbelievable to me, you know, but I mean, then it was like, that's where I was supposed to be, man. <laughs> you know, I'm, I need a bigger push than this. I'm like, you know, you're always pushing, but no, it was a good, it was a good thing, you know. Um, yeah, I always said, you know, and I've always said this, and and it was, it's strange, and I, I thank the good Lord for it. So sometimes I go, I don't know, but, um, some, for some reason, I had a knack for this. I could accidentally do good in wrestling. You know, or, or it's like they say, um, there's a million football players out there that's better than the guys in the NFL, but they didn't get the break they did. You know, like I got lucky. There's a lot of guys that's probably way better than me that they go, hey, Lenny, that guy's got a hurt knee, get in there. <laughs> and all of a sudden, boom, I took off. I was just lucky like that in, in this profession, you know, in wrestling. And you had the talent to... And, and luckily, and, and I honed it and developed and tried to do best I could, and it just all worked together. Now, I thank the guy for my career. When I first started, I wanted to play pro baseball. You know, and I was pretty good at it. And uh, but um, and so I had the love for baseball. And then, But then once I got into wrestling, I didn't... And, and, I, and I feel kind of bad about this. I didn't really love wrestling. I was just good at it. I could make money at it. And so I did it. And it was easy for me to start. Well, it wasn't, the start wasn't easy, <laughs> but I, uh, but then once you're at it and you do it for a while and you get in there and you really do it and you draw money and the way it's supposed to be done, you start respecting it. And I did, and I always will now. I always did after that. It's like, it, it's, it's, it's just like any other profession. You gotta get in there and dig to be one of the best and to make money at it, you gotta be good and you gotta work your ass off, you know? Andre the Giant had a reputation, at least, you know, some guys he would like and, and he, would, yeah. he would work. Did he have any issue with you being a 21-year-old kid? Did he, did he like you off the bat? How was the relationship? You know, yeah, he did. He did. No, it's funny, yeah. He knew right off the bat if you, if you were good or not. He had a knack for that. He loved, he loved to mess with me. Like, he would tell me, this is the truth, man. He'd go, you know, he would do this, not in a big show, but like in, say, in a, a, a spot show or something, he'd go, headlock. He'd tell me to get a headlock on him. I'm telling you, the man's head, and I'll exaggerate, is this big. I can barely touch my fingers. Okay? And he, I, not, well, does it look like I got a hold on Andre? And so Andre had me around the waist, right? And, and he'd hold me around the waist, and he'd start going like this. I was on my side. <laughs> Them big old hands, and it would be beat red, and he'd go, and he wouldn't, and I'd try to get loose, he wouldn't let me go. I'm supposed to have a hold on him. <laughs> He goes, you're not going nowhere. He thought that was funny, and, but but we always got along. Whenever he would come into a place, he would if he knew I was there, I want to ride with the uh, with the grappler. And he'd tell Bill Watts, whoever, I ride. With, so they'd tell me you're driving on. I said, hey, I already knew I was, man. You get, I want to. We have a blast, right? Yeah. We had a good time. But I got him. Well, one time, <laughs> only one time, I see him get really mad at me. Okay. Well, two times, <laughs> but. You all love this. We were in. Um, he had. I was. We were working. I was working in Louisiana territory, and I was this particular night. I'm in Jackson, Mississippi, right? Well, I'd been out with Murdoch a couple of nights before, and Dick Murdoch could drink some beer, okay? And we just got hammered, and I was hungover as hell, <laughs> and so I had to wrestle. And, I, and I'm a hurting man, but I got to go on. With, I got junkyard dog in the semi, and then Andre's got somebody in the main event. And, uh, and he is just coming in. He'd been some other territory. 
So he's flying in for two weeks. And so around the loop, right? And so I know I'm, he's going to want me to drive him and all. But this particular night, I'm doing the best I can to avoid him. And so, and so I didn't want to drink that night. Which, and so I go out there and in Jackson, Mississippi, that's a big arena, but they got like a roll-up door, you know, where they bring all the trucks through the back and all, and a ring and all. Okay, well, they had it open because it was summer. And I, so that Andre's on one side over there, and I'm over here getting warmed up for my match, and I'm waiting to go out to Junkyard to wrestle Junkyard Dog. And Andre comes out dressing me, he sees me, goes, Boss Man! He, if he liked you, he called you Boss Man. Okay, if he didn't, you don't want to know where he called you. Anyway, he says, Boss Man! He sees me, I look out, he says, Hey, buddy, boss! He goes, he goes, Tonight, me and you! I go, Yeah. I go wrestle, I get in my car, <laughs> To shower and I haul ass back to Baton Rouge. But I knew he knew, and the, he was riding with Robley and I forget, and couple of I know they knew where I lived at, my apartment, right? That's where all the guys live. So I, I, I called Black Bart. He lived, in a, he lived in a place across the river, you know, because he, he had a wife. He didn't want to be over with, it was, with us wild idiots, right? Him and his wife lived in another area. And I, so I called, he, he had a spare bedroom, I knew. He's a good friend of mine. I said, Bart, can I crash here, brother, please? Andre's looking for me, man. He goes, come on, I don't care, partner. You know how he is, right? <laughs> so, so I come over there, and um, I'm not kidding you. I don't know who stooged me off, but Andre found me. And it, I was laying in the bed, and here's how he woke. He, he couldn't even get through the bedroom door. He grabbed the mattress like that. I'm dead asleep, and flipped me upside down. And I'm in my underwear, right? And when I stood up, he chopped me back across the mattress. I said, let me get my pants. Hold on. And we went out drinking. And man, it, and of course, there, and across the river there, they got after hours clubs open all night. <laughs> he tortured me so bad. He kept making me drink. He kept making me drink. Man, you don't want to get him mad at you. <laughs> What's, what's like an average, I mean, because, you know, you're a big guy already, so yeah. I know you probably throw back, especially in your heyday. I mean, what was it like drinking with Andre? Uh, man, it just, you know, you, if, you, if you'd if you ever been around him, he could, like, a regular Coors, 12-ounce Coors, Coors Light, he could hide it in his hand. You couldn't see it. He could close his head around it, and you couldn't see it, okay? I mean, and he'd just shoot like it wasn't nothing. Um, I don't know how many he's... <laughs> get drink. but I know he just never stopped, you know, and uh, oof, he's unbelievable. I remember going to Lake Charles. He's the only guy that could, they would let do this. We are going to Lake Charles for a match, and he goes, boss man, stop the liquor store. I said, we're on the way to the show, dude. <clears throat> I said, Bill Watts, I get pissed off. He goes, not me. I do what I want. Went in, he got four bottles of wine, and he drank some. Of his, he drank them before we, his match. <laughs> Before his match, he wasn't even buzzed. He wasn't even, unbelievable. You know, one time he did this, and this is one thing, like people don't, they don't realize this, but we were, it was me and him, just me and him riding together this one particular week, because we're, we was, he was in all these little shows. They were like, you know, uh, small towns, that, and, and everybody comes out, because when are you gonna get to see Andre the Giant come to this town as the population, you know, 1,500 people. So everybody from the surrounding area, I mean, the high school was so packed, you couldn't hardly get in there where we went, right? So this is like the fourth one. And you know, we've been going for like a week and all these little towns, everything closes at, mid at 10. There's no bars, there's nothing. So we go back to the motel, I'm so bored. I want to get back to Shreveport somewhere where I can chase women. <laughs> you know, like be a regular wrestler, you know? <laughs> and so, Andre, so this is the last night and we do it and, and we're about 80 miles or 100 miles from Shreveport. And I go, all right, man, we can finally get back in the car. We're going, Andre's match is over. Here we go. And I said, boss, man, we'll stop by Cowboys and we get in town. He goes, no way. I said, what? I said, dude, you seen the women over? Oh my God. And they knew all us wrestlers. We drank for almost free. It was just a blast. And he goes, no way. Because I'm thinking, I go in with Andre, dude. I'm have women everywhere. He goes, I can't do that. I said, why? He goes, now here I am arguing with a giant. Like, <laughs> I drank way too much that night, right? And so he goes, I said, hey, man, come on. So I'm getting mad. Come on, I want to go in there. We've been on the road for a damn week. I ain't seen done nothing. He goes, boss, man, I can't do that. He goes, um, he said, I go in there like, like Elvis Presley. You can't, you can't drink. There's too many people all over you. I said, oh, horse shit. 
I said, I tell you what, we'll go and I'll do this. I know all the bouncers and I did. I saw I had them circle the table and keep everybody back. The only ones we'll let in is the girls we won't talk to. You know, I said, we'll have a hell of a night. He goes, finally, he goes, I'm nuts. So finally, he got mad. He goes, okay, I'll show you. I'll go, I'll, I'll show you. We go, I went in, so I stayed in the car, man. I, I went and talked to you guys. Hey, hell yeah, bring him in, man. They're all excited. I take him in there, we cannot. Even with them, they're going through their legs. They, I didn't, we drank, we didn't even get how beer finished. I said, let's get the hell out of here. We can't even talk to each other. You know, people just, it was crazy. And so, I mean, but then, you know, I, one time, just like this, I don't mean to keep harping on Andre, but I, I want people to understand. The, look, the crazy things, like you go to the Shreveport, right, in Shreveport, the hotel, he stayed at, at the Sheridan. I couldn't afford the Sheridan. I stayed over at Alamo Plaza, but so I dropped him off, and they put two king-size beds together, okay? I remember one time I'm leaving, I drop him off, and I'm starting to back out to go over to Alamo Plaza, and he goes, boss man, boss man, stop, stop. I said, what? Come back, I can't come back, I get out. What's wrong? He said, I need you to call for me. I said, call for you? What are you talking about? He goes, come here. And you know, back then we, we didn't have cell phones. We had rotary phones. <laughs> you had to use your finger. He didn't have a pen or nothing. His finger won't fit. And I got to call Japan because I need a big contract. I said, what's the number? <laughs> There's a giant. You know, everything. <laughs> nothing fits, man. <laughs> I, I can imagine just driving a car, going to the bathroom. Everything, bathroom. everything. You, go, you can imagine him flying to Japan. He must have went. Oh, 25 times a year. Fit in that bathroom. I can't fit in it. I know I'm a fat ass, but I'm not like Andre the Giant. <laughs> okay. That poor guy. Yeah. Woo. Just to wrap up on Andre, do you remember the last time that you saw him? Oh, gosh. Let's see. The last time I saw Andre. I'm trying to think. Guys, it's been so long ago, brother. It's hard to remember when I see it. Uh, Trying to think what matches I would have been at to see him. No, I don't even really remember. I actually it was Louisiana, then and then uh, Charlotte. I was in every territory just about. I was with him, but um, he never made. See, when I when I in the eighty, well, I think it was eighty six or so. I went up to Portland, Oregon, and when I went up there, I stayed up there and worked for Don Owens. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'd go fly back and do other shots, but I didn't stay on the circuit full time like I was for the 15 years before. And so Andre never came through there for Don. So now I guess it's probably back in 86 or something before, 85, maybe in Texas. The last time I've seen him, yeah. What a great friendship you guys had. Oh, he was a great guy. He, he was a good guy. Yeah, Andre was something else. Hello folks, this is a Grappler right here at Title Match Network. Let me tell you something, you're gonna be seeing a lot of me. And you know what? We're going to bring all kinds of stories to you. But if you got any questions, subscribe here. We'll bring you the answers and tell you every story you want to hear. And believe me, when I get through telling you, you will say the greatest story ever told on Title Match Network is from The Grappler. Beat that if you can.